but I have a very, very low threshold for taking it. So I'm uh, Professor PJ Wormald. I head up the Department of Otolaryngology Head and Neck Surgery, which in layman's terms is ENT surgery. We will uh, have four dissections for you this afternoon, starting with uh, Daniel Simmons uh, from uh, Zurich. We have 450 ENT surgeons attending this conference. And now we are close to the... This conference has been streamed from anatomical labs at the university. The surgeons see this as the highlight of the conference, the ability to be able to actually see surgery being performed and techniques being shown which they can take away with them and utilize on their patients. To do that we need to have a realistic model to be able to teach these surgeons these new procedures and that model is absolutely critically uh, based on human donation of the body. We have a piece of bone floating on the end of a tendon. It's no longer attached to the rest of the bone. So the tendon is that strong, it pulls it off the bone. Far out. Um, so does that My name is Prajay Patel. I'm from Auckland in New Zealand. Um, I've come here to the University of Adelaide to complete the medicine course. Yeah. You've got a radio and an urban injury, the bit that's might be still supplied by the jury. Yeah. I went around to different parts of the world, saw the need for healthcare there and um, I remember going to see the doctor with my mum as a kid and just always being fascinated by, you know, the level of care that they show all their patients and it's something that I really wanted to aspire to do. We'll be back here next Wednesday to do lower limb. But remember, your learning has to be focused on the specimens. You can do anything out of the books, but this is different. This is, this is real life. The first time we do go down into the anatomy lab and we're provided with um, those resources from people who've donated their bodies. It is quite intimidating and there is a sense of apprehension, but once you're there and you have the chance to learn from those resources, it's a privilege to be able to do that. You know, when I first came into the labs, I remember looking at these and these are the, re the real thing, the real deal, and you know, there's no better way to learn than actually picking it up and seeing where things go, where things attach. I remember looking at my own hand at one point and being like, you know, that's what I look like, that's what it looks like. You know, if you cut, if you cut that open, you know, it's unbelievable. There is a canal there and there's a, there's a, a name for guys. Guyon's Canal. Yeah, Guyon's Canal. There hasn't done a question yet. Brain anatomy is very complex and knowing not only the surface anatomy but the in-depth anatomy and knowing how each part relates to each other is fundamentally important. Hello, good morning, how are you? There's a lot of individual variation from one person to another so the more that we get a chance to work with this tissue and learn from it the more we gain in our knowledge and more skilled we become. So we have analysed our courses, and one of our courses is on managing major arterial haemorrhage. If you injure the carotid artery, a third of the patients will die. A third of the patients will end up with a stroke. A third of the patients will survive intact. We then analysed surgeons who had been through our training course and looked at their outcomes of their patients when they had a carotid injury, and 100% of those patients survived. 100% of those patients had no neurological outcome and all of those patients had a great outcome as a consequence of the training that we were able to give. So when I do that, I will turn and view them. You notice that? So for us to be able to teach without the body donation program would be almost impossible. 30 hours.